It's pink, it's powerful, and it's powered by AOC. Good afternoon and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the Four Piece Variety, Walkie Triple XL. And I've never ever reviewed a pink monitor until today. And this is actually a joke between the AOC country manager and I that he, I, okay, so we met at the Intel thing and we had a good chat and really, really cool guy. And I was like, what if, uh, why haven't I seen a pink monitor? And he sort of gave me a, Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then literally this thing landed at Deep Tech for me. And I was just like, bruh. <laughs> I thought you were joking. But literally they made a pink and white monitor. So if you want to finish that pink and white setup, now you can do that with actually a really, really sick screen. This has been specced incredibly well. It's got one of the nicest IPS panels I've ever used, as you'll see by the specifications and stuff as we go through the, the review. But um, yeah, this is it is particularly nice thing to look at. So let us start off from the top. So this is the XG two seven five QXR. At some point, one of those letters differentiates this as the pink and white model. Um, so yeah, and the, it's very pink. It's very very pink, as you can see by the stand and some of the finishing on the monitor, but they've done the Aegon treatment to it. So they've given it sort of the top tier specification. So if we move around the back panel, there's the obligatory RGB there with the Aegon logo on top, which is exactly what they did with their 360 Hertz. Very nice periscope neck. I absolutely love the handle that is on top of this periscope. It just makes it so easy if you are moving around with it, etc. then it's just a nice pick up and go. Very, very wide frame. This is a trend that's generally happening around monitors at the moment that I personally don't like because I'd like to do the eSports intimacy position. But this one actually did quite well because it's actually got a significant amount of rotation on the base. So that helped with that eSports intimacy position quite a lot. Adjustability is very high here. It's got, like I said, their full fat Aegon frame. So you've got a huge amount of up and downs, probably about 20 centimeters worth of height differential that you can do with a monitor over there. You can obviously tilt uh, either way. It can do portrait or landscape. Um, it's I think it's 90 degrees only though that it goes through. So, but enough that you could have it in either orientation on the base stand. And then obviously uh, a decent amount of tilt for when you get it to your heart if you want to sit over the top of the monitor or you want it to be looking down at you if you've got it on a stand or something like that then you'll be able to adjust it pretty nicely that all then clips into a standard 100 by 100 base amount so if you've got a desk clamp you can do away with this and then you can just have it on a desk arm and you lose the pink because there's no pink on it it just becomes a white monitor after the fact so i can't help but feel maybe a little bit of pink along the rest of the frame may have been a good idea um probably suggesting a tooling nightmare for you guys at ASC. So really sorry about that. If someone comes at you in the comments, uh, wasn't me. The only thing physically with this that I didn't actually like, especially initially, was the white chin at the bottom over here. It's very distracting. You almost think it's part of your picture or your start bar. And I'd literally drag the mouse down instinctually, instinctively, instinctually. I would literally drag the mouse down instinctively trying to click over there, but it's not the start bar that, that's over there because of Windows scaling as well with running a 1080p on the other side. It, everything did look very, very small 
on here. Obviously, you can just adjust the scaling and then you'll be fine. But it was just a little bit distracting with this chin. The one thing that, on the other hand, with a frame that is really nice is corner to corner on this is going to be superb. If you were to do a triple monitor span display, you're looking at three mils uh, on the other side. So maybe maximum worth uh, six mils worth of gap in between each one. And then obviously with maximum brightness and stuff, it's going to become a very thin band in your mind. So these will actually do monitor to monitor, corner to corner pretty damn well. But now what about the most important but the panel in the middle? Well, this is where they've turned up the heat to the 11 and then like tried to turn it even just a little bit more. This is a 1440p IPS panel, already a good start. How about 170 hertz refresh rate? Good times, true one millisecond response rate, beautiful. Now let's throw 97% of DCI-P3 at it. So sRGB and Adobe uh, RGB are becoming uh, like a thing of the past almost because of the observable color spectrum, they do like 70 to 80%, let's say. DCI-P3 is like the entire thing. It's all 16.8 million colors that your brain or could possibly discern. And this does 97% of that. So like that Samsung QLED that I did, that's 100% DCI-P3. This is right on its heels. So you experience with things like Mr. Snake over here with the greens and the reds and the high contrast points next to each other are absolutely superb. Out of all of the monitor specs that are listed on there, there's only one that I found that it didn't quite get to. And that was the viewing angle quoted at 178. It is theoretically there but it does glow which is just normal with ips i find that if you do get onto extreme angle you can see glow around the edges of the panel and that i think i can attribute to the way that they finished this with the the film that's over the top of this it's in between a gloss and a matte so it's not completely reflective, but it's also not completely matte in and of itself. So I think that's maybe why that is occurring. But if you're dead on or even 30 to 60 degrees even off of it, you're not going to notice. Only if you come to the extremes or if you're approaching it from a side angle that you notice that there is a little bit of glow from it. But in environments like Tarkov, where you're running around in you know beautiful forests and mountain ranges and that sort of stuff, it's absolutely fantastic, that being a major focus of the games that I play these days. Um, I did try out some Sears, I tried out some Cyberpunk on it as well. Cyberpunk has brilliant colors, and I've got a 3070 Ti on my main machine. So yeah, at full everything with ray tracing on this, it was stunning, stunningly good looking. G-Sync as well, you know, just to get that frame timing in. But the responsiveness of the panel is legitimately good. So it's not just like a fad product that they added some colors onto they had a really good product that they then added some coloring onto so it's not something you're buying like a gimped version of a 27 it's full fat it's got all of the right stuff in all of the right places the performance and the quality of it are exceptionally exceptionally good Anywho, that is all I have for you on the AOC Aegon AG275 QXR. Very, very long name, and but very, very long spec list of just all round wins. Good job, AOC. Until next time, my friends, I hope you guys stay safe, keep well. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.